from Amy Goodman. It's being described as the most significant revision of the nation's surveillance law in three decades. The Senate is preparing to vote on rewriting the nation's Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act and giving immunity to phone companies involved in President Bush's secret domestic spy program. On Friday, the Democratic-controlled House approved the measure by a vote of 293 to 129. The legislation gives the government new powers to eavesdrop on both domestic and international communications. The American Civil Liberties Union has warned it would allow for the mass, untargeted, and unwarranted surveillance of all communications coming into and out of the United States. While Democratic leaders in Congress, as well as Democratic presidential candidate Barack Obama, have hailed the bill as a compromise, Democratic Senator Russ Feingold of Wisconsin describes it as a capitulation. Senator Feingold has been the leading congressional voice against the Bush administration's warrantless spy program since it was exposed nearly three years ago. Today, the Wisconsin senator joins us from Washington, D.C. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Senator Feingold. Good morning, Amy. Can you describe the legislation that the Senate is considering is expected to pass uh, by Friday? Well, this is a great blow to the rights of the American people, and uh, much of the publicity has been about a very important aspect, giving these telephone companies immunity uh, that cooperated uh, with the president's illegal program. We think that should be decided uh, based on current law, not some kind of a retroactive immunity, but that's essentially what this bill does. But you know what? Even worse are the provisions of the bill that will make it very easy for the government to essentially suck up the communications, all communications of Americans that go overseas, whether it's an email or a text message or a, or a phone call to a daughter or junior year abroad or a, a child who's in Iraq or a reporter or a business associate. Uh, this is one of the greatest intrusions, potentially, on the rights of Americans protected under the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution in the history of our country. And uh, unfortunately, it's going to go through with the help of some Democrats. So this is a very, very sad day for our Constitution and for our rights. And it's not justified uh, by the terrorism issue because we do not have any problem at all with going after anybody that we have reasonable suspicions about. It has to do with sucking all this information into a huge database in a way that is very intrusive on the privacy of all Americans. Can what role did the telecommunications companies play in writing this bill? Well, uh, they clearly wanted this immunity. Uh, they, they think they should be let off the hook, regardless of what the current uh, laws require. Uh, I think, and many of my allies on this think, that the court should decide it based on the law. Uh, sadly, the administration has been very behind the telephone company's desire to have this immunity, maybe even leading the charge, because there's an additional benefit to them if this immunity goes through. It may block our ability to directly challenge in court uh, the violation of the Constitution that the illegal wiretapping uh, program represents. The president takes the position that under Article II of the Constitution, he could ignore the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Uh, we believe that that's absolutely wrong. I have pointed out that I think it is uh, not only against the law, but I think it's a pretty plain impeachable offense that the president created this program, and yet this immunity provision may have the, the effect not only of giving immunity to the, to the telephone companies, but it may also allow the administration to, to block a legal accountability for this crime, which I believe it is. And, you know, the United States Supreme Court, even though seven out of the ten justices, seven out of the nine justices were appointed by Republicans, they just recently repudiated the president again on excessive executive powers when it came to the detainees. Here, they may do it also, and it would be a very significant ruling, and yet the administration may, may well be able to block accountability on this in front of the courts by this legislation that Democrats are going to allow uh, to go through. Senator Feingold, explain exactly what you think is an impeachable offense. Well, you know, this is a, one of the things that's been debated over the centuries, but I, I believe that when uh, it has to do with the rule of law and the very, very structure of our system of government, in other words, not just the issue that many have been concerned about, misleading the country into war, the Iraq war, that was a terrible thing, and, and, you know, some say that's an impeachable offense. But to me, when the law is clear, when it's absolutely clear that there is a clear statute and the president creates his own idea of a law and says he doesn't have to follow the duly elected laws of the land. To me, that's right at the core of what the founders of this country meant when they talked about high crimes and misdemeanors. So I'm not calling for impeachment. I'm not saying that uh, 
that's something that's realistic or the right thing for Democrats to do at this point. What I'm saying is the idea of a law that will prohibit uh, the courts potentially from ruling on this uh, is, is against the rule of law and also uh, protects the president from a historical record that I think should show that he did something that was at least impeachable when it comes to these war warrantless wiretaps. Now, last year you called for President Bush and Vice President Cheney, it was just about a year ago, to be censured, um, not impeached, but censured. Do you think they should be impeached now? I think they should be censured. I, I think the idea of going through an impeachment process at this point is obviously not going to happen and, and it's sort of a futile exercise because there's simply not the will to do it. But I think a censure resolution that essentially lays out the same case, that for the first time since Andrew Jackson says this president uh, has actually violated the laws of the land and has disregarded our system of government is a very important step. I know it won't happen. I know it's not going to be brought up, but I do think it would be the appropriate step and uh, at least set the stage for pulling back on these excessive claims of executive power uh, that were made by this president. The next president has to renounce these kind of claims, and I think a censure, resol censure resolution would help that. What's stopping your colleagues from doing this? The argument they use against impeachment is what you said. Um, whether or not uh, it's merited, they don't want to get bogged down, and they feel the election is a form of impeachment if the Democrats win. Um, but what stops them from censuring the president and vice president? Well, I wish they would do it. I I'm sure what they would say, and I do understand it at some level, is we want to show the American people that our focus is on solving their problems. Health care, getting us out of Iraq, uh, getting away from dependence on foreign oil, and that that's what the image that we want to have going into the election. That's an understandable argument. But it, it, it begs the question of what about history? What about the rule of law? How, how do you justify not doing something? So that's why I think censure is a good combination with our primary focus on trying to show that we're going to have a different regime when we come in. It's going to be a different approach to these issues. Uh, but I do, I do know that uh, most Democrats are not interested in pursuing uh, the censure at all. Back to FISA, the FISA law. The House Democratic leaders call it a bipartisan compromise because instead of giving blanket retroactive immunity to phone companies that facilitated the president's spy program, it would route the um, it would route the grants of immunity through a district court. Um, as long as the companies can demonstrate to a judge that they were instructed to spy on Americans by the president or the Bush administration, um, they would be spared the trouble of litigating at this point. What more? than 40 lawsuits against them, and there's many more expected. What's your response to that? Uh, it's not even a fig leaf. It's a joke. It does not in any way prevent the ruling from that court basically automatically of immunity because it just involves saying, look, they got a piece of paper from the government. Uh, this is nothing but Democrats trying to uh, pretend that they're doing something here. Uh, they're doing nothing. They're giving in. Uh, Senator Kit Bond, a Republican from Missouri, is basically giggling at the fact that the Republicans in the administration got essentially everything they want on this. Uh, it's sadly a great failure on the part of the Democratic majority that was elected in 2006 uh, primarily to get us out of Iraq, but also significantly to protect the Constitution of the United States. This is not a proud moment. Who do you feel is in charge right now? Is it the Democrats or the Republicans? Well, you know, on, on the domestic issues, uh, the Democrats are doing pretty well, uh, except for when we run into a filibuster. So we have been able to, to get some achievements. But whenever you come up against one of these national security issues, uh, the president and the fear of Democrats of standing up to the president and the vice president still have the trump card. And they seem to always win on whether it be the Iraq issue or the Constitution or the civil liberties issues, uh, because Democrats are still afraid to stand up and say, look, we know you're using fear as a tactic, and we're not afraid of it. But unfortunately, uh, they still have the trump card, despite the very low uh, popularity of the president and the fact that it's a lame duck administration. Senator Feingold, will you filibuster this bill? We are going to resist this bill. We are going to make sure that the procedural votes uh, are gone through. In other words, a filibuster is requiring 60 votes to proceed to the bill, 60 votes to get cloture on the legislation. We will also, Senator Dodd and I and others, will be uh, taking some time to talk about this on the floor. We're not just going to let it be rubber stamped. Would you filibuster, though? That's what I just described. Uh, um, Senator Barack Obama last year said that he was opposed to granting retroactive immunity to the telecoms, but he has now indicated support for the FISA deal. Your thoughts? Wrong vote. Uh, regrettable. Uh, many Democrats will do this. 
Uh, we should be standing up for the Constitution. When President Obama is president, uh, he will, I'm sure, uh, work to, to fix some of this, but it's going to be a lot easier to prevent it now than to try to fix it later. Campaign finance, um, five gold McCain, McCain fine gold bill. Um, last week, the big news, uh, Senator Obama, though signing on the dotted line last year, that he would uh, support public financing, um, that if the other candidate as well would support 